a scene from the blockbuster The Dark Knight. With its themes of sacrifice and suffering for the greater good, this movie, for many observers, offers a number of striking parallels to biblical stories like Moses against Pharaoh or David against Goliath, heroes seeking justice against great odds. The Bible's influence on Western civilization is immeasurable. It touches every aspect of our lives, politics, literature, music, language. Where do you think the terms scapegoat, drop in the bucket, salt of the earth come from? But for all its influence and inspiration, the Bible remains a source of contention and confusion, sort of a cultural Tower of Babel. According to scripture, the problem with the Tower of Babel, depicted in this 15th century painting, was its root in human pride. The Tower of Babel story equates monoliths with pride. The people want to build a tower. Why? It says to make a name for themselves. One people, one language, one tower with its top in the heavens that proclaims their superiority and their special closeness to God. God is not fond of monoliths. From the incredible diversity of creation to the preservation of not just one, but four different Gospels. God seems to have an interest in multiple perspectives. Ann Robertson is executive director of the Massachusetts Bible Society, an organization determined to widen the public biblical discourse. The Bible Society was founded as the first ecumenical organization in the country expressly to bring together the many voices of all the different denominations, the liberal, the conservative, the moderate, everything. You have this new theme, one book, many voices. What's the importance and significance of that right now? We've been concerned that for too long there has only been one supposed voice of the Bible, one way that it can be interpreted to the exclusion of all others. And we feel that there are many different ways to interpret the scriptures. We all interpret according to our own life story and our own life history. But there was just him and the angels. Robertson points to interpretation like the contemporary midrash of Julius Lester. When God finished making the world, he felt as bright and sunny as love. He'd never made a world before, and if he said so himself, and he did, he thought he'd done a very good job. What does it mean for you when you say scriptures or sacred text the Torah are, are the truth. What does that mean? How do you define truth in the terms of the scriptures? Well, I would have to add an S to the truth um, because I think it's such a complicated document that um, to say truth uh, limits it in some ways. And certainly from a Jewish perspective, um, all Jews don't read the book in the same way, don't interpret the Torah in the same way, don't think about the Torah in the same way. And so I would say that the book represents, you know, truths for, for me as a Jew. It certainly represents uh, the history, and I think Jews look at the Torah a lot, you know, just in terms of the history. Mark Burroughs is the professor of the history of Christianity at Andover Newton Theological School. Many people say that the uh, Bible and its meaning is, is largely owned or defined by a politically conservative voice these days. Uh, would you agree? I would say that's not true, although they've certainly gotten the major amount of press over the last years. When my more conservative friends or those who talk to me or those I listen to talk about uh, the fact that many Christians have abandoned the biblical way, I always ask them, which, what is that biblical way? Is there some single biblical value that defines anything in particular? When you talk about your, your mission, are you trying to stop the right-wing conservative fundamentalist section of Christianity versus the liberal progressive section? Is it that simple or is it more complicated? I would say it's more complicated in the, the dualism and the division that exists right now in this country uh, we think is part of the problem. That if I have a certain kind of interpretation I get labeled in one way or another and then automatically anything I say is disregarded and I think we have to be beyond those kinds of labels which is why you know the voices across the spectrum are all voices that we want to have a seat at the table and be able to 
speak their mind to say why it is they believe what they believe and let people judge for themselves.